Global Upset Tel Aviv 2019 Leaders Meeting. Uh, we're probably going to keep this relatively short so that, thank you. We're going to keep this relatively short so that you can actually have a time to ask any questions that you have at the end and then get to the important stuff, which of course we all know is the food and the drinks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, the agenda for tonight is the foundation update, the chapters update, projects update, the events, and the operational update. The uh, first thing to note is that I don't know um, who was at the last Global AppSec, but there you go. Perfect. One, two, three, four. Okay. But we're, we've got a slightly different staff than we did last time. Um, some of you, if not most of you, might know the interim executive director. Um, he came on board January 2nd. January 2nd. It's over. It's Mike McCayman, he's in the back, back there, as you know. You all know me, probably. <laughs> I've only been here for a year, so it's not like I've been here for a very long time, so. <laughs> um, also in the back is our events director, director uh, Emily Berman. She came on board just, what, this month, right? We're expecting really great things of her. <laughs> um, that's right, all of them. Um, and our senior manager of sponsorship and membership, she is also here tonight, Kelly Santa Lucia. And if you are a leader and not a member, First of all, shame. And second of all, she's back here in the corner if you want to talk to her. <laughs> um, not here tonight is our community manager, but you probably all know her, Dawn Aitken. She mostly deals with chapters. Um, so if you're a chapter leader, you know her very well. You've spent a lot of time with her. Um, our project and sponsorship manager is Lisa Jones. She's also not here tonight. And finally, we have an uh, accounting firm, if you will, who takes care of our accounting. Th those are the people who, whenever you put in the JIRA tickets, it goes to them to pay you. Okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, here's our OWAS Foundation Board. That recently changed as well. We have three, is it three new members? Three, right? So, first and foremost is our chairman, Martin Noblock. He's been here quite some time. <laughs> um, Owen Pendle Pendleberry, who could not be here, he's our vice chairman. Uh, Sharif Mansour, he's our treasurer. Uh, if you get a chance to go to the Open Security Summit, you'll get to meet him. He'll be at the Open Security Summit after this, uh, it's right after this event. Uh, our secretary is Ofer Mayor. He's a new um, board member. Secretary. And then we have our three members at large. That's Chinsey Wang. She could not be here. Richard Greenberg, who is right here. And Gary Robinson, who also could not be here. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So the current theme for the OAS Foundation staff is to simplify, unify, and grow. And I don't think the last two are going to be that easy without the first one. Um, one of the biggest problems we have as a staff is that all of our, welcome Tanya. <laughs> one of our problems is that um, a lot of our processes are a little bit convoluted. Um, most of you probably are aware of this. So, one of our biggest things we need to do is reduce the complexity of the processes so that we can advance the mission of the foundation. Um, next, and you'd have to say it's equally as important, is to unify the community, have us all moving toward you know, one OWASP, if you remember that from the previous 
uh, AppSec. Our, our goal is one OWASP. That's right. <laughs> State the obvious, thank you. <laughs> um, and last is, of course, once we can simplify and unify, then we can grow the foundation to move forward and create these big events that Emily is going to be moving us toward, right? Thank you. Um, so the future directions revive the chapter and project committees, which with Richard's help and the help of Andrew Vanderstock, we were able to say that the project committee will be ramping up here shortly. Um, and with the project committee, we're really hoping to be able to move quicker on like, for instance, project reviews. Right now, the project reviews are done at these AppSec events. The reason for that is because it's really the only time we have where we can get enough project people together to get the reviews done. And if we had a project committee, we could certainly do a lot more of that. Um, Alex, yes. Just to emphasize, that's one <coughs> we want more. If you're in this room, we're yes. asking you to consider, I know you're all busy, right? But, but we're the kind of people that take on this stuff to try to, to start up some other committees, such as chapter of leaders committee. That's a very important maybe a committee to assist Emily in marketing. There's a variety of others that you could look towards starting up, but if you can, please tell your chapters that we're looking for volunteers to start up committees. And I know that we have a committees 2.0 document on the wiki that will help you, that will guide you through it. I know it seemed like it could be a lot, but it, once you read it, um, you know, the foundation staff can assist if you have questions. We, we really <coughs> want some help because we have limited staff and limited board members, and the committee has been very vocal for many, many years, and we just love you all to get involved in that, and this is a great opportunity. Thank you. Sure, thank you. As, as another example of that, um, when it comes to projects, and I speak projects because that's near and dear to me, um, one of the things we talked about the previous AppSec and that we've been wanting to move forward are project services, for instance. The ability to have a place where the project leaders can go to say they need a GUI person, they need translation, they need documentation, anything like that. We'd have a place where the project leaders could go to get people to help them with that. And right now, we haven't been able to do that. But if we had a project committee, um, we'd have a lot more people being able to push that forward. So among the, the other things that we're working on, um, some of the staff projects that we have is the website. I don't know how many of you actually read the blog, the last blog that we did. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> but um, it talks specifically about moving the website, um, making a more modern website, putting it in GitHub is actually what we're looking at. Um, and I, we think that will actually help promote the foundation outside of normal OWASP people. We're used to the wiki, right? I mean, yeah. you're used to it, you see it, but if, if you go to Matt Tassaro, when his 16-year-old daughter went and looked at the website at one point, she was like, is this a real business, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we don't want people going there and thinking that. Most people in security know who OWASP is. We want, to, we want those people who aren't part of security, or who might be just starting up to go, OWASP is real, and our current presence doesn't say that. Um, so we're looking for help as well on the website. Right now we've got um, Ken, who is with GitHub. He's going to help us. Andra has volunteered to help us. Thank you, Andra. Um, Jonathan Marshall and Dominique. There you are. <laughs> so thank you. So we're going to be looking to move that forward within the next month or two, right? Um, hopefully the next month. Right, Mike? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, some of the other things we're looking at are changes to the corporate sponsorship. You'll see more about that. Um, later as we, as we uh, send out more communication about that. Um, 
We're looking to revise the policies and the leader's handbooks. And what that means for you right now is just that we're trying to coalesce what is policy and take them out of the leader handbooks, for instance, because they both reference similar things, but separately, if you know what I mean. Whereas we want to be able to say, if the policy for a spending policy is, is in one place, Project leaders, chapter leaders, it doesn't matter who you are, it's the same place to go look and see. Okay. Data normalization. How do you yes, thank you. <laughs> um, the final one is the event planning, which I've mentioned a couple of times already. With uh, Emily, we're going to move forward with, um, what are we looking at next year? <laughs> I'm trying to make her commit. Well, <laughs> Three events, four events, what are we looking at? Right now, the plan is to do three global events next year, 2020. May, we will go to Europe. And in September, October, we'll be back in the US. And then in December, we're planning to have a conference in Japan. That one's much more speculative at this point in time. All right. There you go. <laughs> speculative. What about Canada? We've talked about Canada. Um, in fact, that was one of the cities we were talking about in North America. Um, the challenge is that if you're an American, uh, one out, I'm sorry, two out of every 10 Americans have a passport. Um, what? Yeah. Which means eight out of 10 Americans do not. They would, they would not travel to Canada, even though it's that close. Um, and so the logic is that. So that, we haven't made a decision yet when we were looking at Canada, but the reason why we were thinking that may not work is for that reason, that it would, deter <laughs> Americans to go unless there's a big rush to get passports. So. Do they need to have a passport to come? Yes, they do. Yeah. It's, 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 not, it's not the good old America, it's the new America. And yes, you have to have a passport to come back into the States, even oh. as an American from the same you can never leave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they really It's a good deal. 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 To counter that argument, though. It has not been decided. Sure. And to counter that argument, and the question would also be how many of the outside community don't have a passport? But America, all Americans At least from the American perspective, to counter that argument, we work in tech, therefore it's not like we're hurting for that. And to counter the question, how many Canadians also don't have a passport? That can't make it to the US. Yeah. I don't know. 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 Anyone on staff, because we're talking about this right now, but the one thing that we are going to do, um, and Emily and I have talked about it a lot, is we want to make sure that we're planning the next two and three years out. We don't want to do this like six weeks out, we decide to have a conference kind of a thing, because it's insane for everybody involved. Um, I, I think it'll help us get better speakers. I think it'll help us get us better keynotes. It'll help grow the attendance. Sponsors. Sponsors, all of those things help if people get a long period of time for notice. So we are, that's one thing we are going to do for certain. Where the events actually happen is still under discussion, but the, the, the commitment to having a long-term plan is absolutely uh, within the near term. So obviously, even if we don't do Canada next year, we start now, we can talk about 2020. Um, moving forward with the chapter update, we have a total number of chapters of 262 that has increased by 51 in 2019. That is actually a really big number for the small amount of uh, time that has transpired since the beginning of the year. Um, the, the layout there, which you cannot probably read, it just basically says the United States is the first one, then it's Europe, Asia Pacific, Middle East, Latin America, Africa, Canada, Caribbean, and then uh, virtual chapters. Um, Dawn's not here, but I, I, I think I can argue that probably the, some of the biggest growth in chapters has been in the Middle East and Latin America. And in India. And India. Um, Asia Pacific then. Where's that Middle East? There we go. Uh, 
Um, this is a chart that shows the specific, the same thing as the previous one, but slightly different. Um, showing that Europe and the United States is the largest, but the biggest growth is, as Mike said, India, for instance. So for project update, we are talking about um, reviving the project summits. As you know, the most of you probably know this, the Open Security Summit, which is a project summit that's not put on by OWA specifically, is uh, coming up next week. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting about project summits is it gives an opportunity for people who are in projects, project leaders, project contributors, it gives them the opportunity to get together in a single place sit down with their peers in a single place, all together, without distraction from, from other items, and sit in and talk about your project, work on the project, specifically work on the project. That's probably the most important thing that gets done. It, it, it doesn't happen, for instance, at AppSec events because there's just not enough time to get that done. So at these uh, project summits, you get to sit with the other people who are your project peers and talk about your projects, collaborate with other projects to, to see how they might um, work together. Um, so we are going to, upcoming in 2020, we're looking at reviving um, project summits for OWASP Foundation, and whether we haven't decided what we're going to do yet as far as where it's going to be or how it's going to coincide with the conferences, but that's on the roadmap. Just, sorry, Arthur. Sure. I have a quick show of hands. Here's your two choices. Would you like to have a summit at the same time as a conference, like it overlaps with the training, or would you rather have it completely separate? Now, there's benefits to it doing it either way. If it's separate, then of course it's only those three days, you're only there for that, and there's nothing else going on, but you have to travel you know, to that. Or you could have it in a conjunction with a conference, which means you couldn't go to the training, and there'll be other stuff going on, but you could also go to the conference too, and you'd only have one trip, if that makes any sense. I think the context of both of them are different, so I prefer separate. Well, so quick show of hands. Wait, I'm confused though, would it be like the summit, then the training, then the conference, or no. would the training no, and the well, summit we'll happen at the same time? time. So what I did out there is we have the um, summit running in parallel to training, and then the conference would be alone on two days at the end. That's one idea. The other idea is that the summits would be completely separate. Mike, I think this vote is going to be biased because the people who go to the summit are not the people who are here. That's Except fair. For those of us who are going to the summit next week. <laughs> but it would be good to get a show. I just want to. What's better for us? Right now, we all, what's that? Better for us or what's better for us in here? Well, I always thought that you would vote for what's better for all of us. That's a good half. That's a good question. Both. Sometimes that's the same thing. Sometimes. <laughs> but I mean, right now we're operating in a vacuum. So it would be good. I, I don't know where the room is. If it's 50 50 or 80 20, because it would be helpful just to know even that. Can, can we get a show of hands of if who's actually gone? Then we can attend summit as well. What's that? Yeah. yeah. If uh, the conference and summit. Both are combined, then we can go to summit and conference as well. Yeah, I understand. So the question is, yeah. which would you prefer? Them to be at the same time, or the summit to be separate from conferences? Same time. Same time. Same time. Same time. Same time. Hold on a second. <laughs> first, first, <laughs> first, let me get a show of hands of people who have actually been to one of the project summits. Right. Whether it was what? one in the past or the what recent one. What did you say? Who, was Who has actually been to a project summit, say Open Security Summit, or one of the previous ones? Okay. Now, how can we vote? Just a, just a quick show of hands. Who would like to have the conference, I'm sorry, the summit separate from a conference? And then who would like it to be at the same time? I don't know if we did. So there's still a lot of work and feedback to get to hear. All, there's not like an overwhelmingly view of one way or the other. So, and that's what I wanted to know. And I guess the option you didn't offer is what we have right now, where they're back to back. Because the only reason I was able to come to the conference is because it's right before the summit. <laughs> it sounds like a perfect opportunity for a survey. Yeah, survey. Well, yeah. Well, My travel is so expensive, yeah. combining it into a single longer trip is the only way I could do it. 
But can, can, can other people be out of the office for two weeks? No. That's I'm not really out of the office. Wait, wait, thanks. Thank you. We're talking about this right now, so we want to have your feedback. Harold's another point for that as well. But um, we're having discussions on what it would look like, how similar or dissimilar will it be from the Open Security Summit. Do we work with the people that organize that summit? And do we, we don't know yet, but just getting some sense of where the community is is helpful. And the, the good news is, is there's not like an obvious path, so we need to keep getting more feedback. Martin. It's not one or the other, because we already have some summits in the OPSEC. We have, uh, for some, some, as a project organized the Open Internal Summit, which is organizing budget with the next step. So it's not one and the other one we forget, and we always have more options than one goal. Sure. Um, I won't go into the whole spiel about what, how important project summits are because you can read it right there. Um, yeah, because there are a lot of people who don't know much about certain projects. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's good that people get to know, especially the leaders get to know about these projects and then they take it to the respective uh, Absolutely, and that's actually what you just said is, is important when it comes to project collaboration. Um, a lot of the issues that we may have with projects where they're using the same information but different, right? right. Would not happen so much if projects were to somehow be in the same place where they can talk about the things and go, oh, hey, you know what, we're working on that too, right? Yes. Um, so I've talked about the project committee already. So we have 139 projects currently and 12, it doesn't sound like many, but it is actually, <laughs> 12 are currently new this year and there's 14 awaiting leader updates. Um, what does it mean? What does that mean? That's what I was going to say. So um, whenever a project is created, what I do is I, I take in you know, the, what they are wanting to do, then I create a wiki page, for instance, and set everything up for them. And then the next step is for the leader to actually go in, update the page, do the GitHub, get everything ready that needs to be there. And you won't see the project on the project inventory until all of that is done. Um, there's no point in me giving a project out there that you're going to go to and, and you're going to look at it and go, okay, there's nothing here, there's, there's no GitHub, there's nothing. So it only happens when all of that takes place. And so there are 14 projects that are uh, almost complete, let's call them that. Um, there are quite a number of them, I would say six to seven of them that I will be reaching out to fairly shortly to say, we need to move forward or we need to just drop the whole thing. But, what do you normally use as a time to have to do it? Um, Right, it's about six months. And actually we have, if it's fair, we have a number of projects that are about six months where they have not done anything. And um, they're gonna get an email from me shortly. <laughs> and either they're going to update it or we're going to remove them from the list. Um, I, I strongly suspect that they will actually do it. Go ahead. what is the project waiting at the update? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> just just to, to state it again, it's, it's a project that really hasn't started as far as OWASP is concerned. Um, they have the very bare bones wiki page, they have nothing in their GitHub for instance, and they're just waiting. It's not about, there are some projects, I'm going to put this out there, you can disagree with me if you feel that it's wrong, but there are some projects where six months might go by and you don't need an update to that project. There really are. Um, it's not normal, especially not in security. But if you're a tool project or a code project, you're, you're, you're going to have different changes. Documentation project, maybe not so much. It just depends, right? Okay, for events. Global Lab Set Television 2019. <laughs> Hopefully you realize you are here. <laughs> Welcome, it's been really great so far. Thank you. 
Um, Global Labs at BC 2019, that the call for papers and trainings ends on May 31st. We are talking about extending that possibly. Please. <laughs> there we go. So we'll, we'll talk about whether or not we're going to extend that past the 531. Um, Global AppSec Amsterdam, the call for papers and trainings is now open. It is open within the last day. So if you're interested in that, please start applying for papers and trainings. When does that close? Ooh. So June, 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 right? June, right? June, June. June. <laughs> we have the dates of these events, right? Yes, the dates are fixed, and I didn't put them on here, but... DC is December 9th through the 13th, and Amsterdam is the September 23rd through the 20th. 7th. 20th. Did you say December? You, no, it's not December. He meant September. September. <laughs> Jet lag. <laughs> Both of those websites are online. If you go DC dot globalabsec.org or ams.globalabsec.org. The websites are online with links to the calls to papers and training along with the dates and information we have thus far. I understand that having two conferences uh, basically the same month is not really highly desirable. We're fixing that in 2020. We kind of inherited this setup for this year and we're making lemonade. Um, we're going to make sure next year it doesn't happen that way. That's why we've already picked the time frames for next year so we can get them far enough apart from one another so people can go to both. This is a little challenging because they're two weeks apart from each other. All right. Operations update. All of you um, have noticed at least the second one. But the first one is the migration of some high cost hosting where we have a lot of servers that were. I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but we have some servers on a certain company's hosting site that was really expensive for us. We have moved those off that hosting and placed them elsewhere, and only the wiki really remains on that particular host. Um, we've also completed the migration from an old mail server to Google Groups, and you've all been impacted by that. Um, hopefully it's been a good impact. <laughs> um, The transition. What? Oh, Zoom. Sure, let me get to that. Uh, <laughs> sure. um, of course, we updated the Jira processes, better communication. There's um, service level agreements in there that you should be seeing. You know, if it tells you that you're going to get an update within 72 hours, hopefully you're getting that. If it's just before a conference. <laughs> Okay, maybe you didn't get that 72 hours, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there because I know I'm guilty of that. Um, the transition from GoToMeeting to Zoom. What was your question? That was a question. Oh, as a project, could we get an account for that? Okay. Yes, you can get an account for it. Just request it and we'll make sure that you have access to it. <laughs> In many cases, it's chapters, of course, that end up with the um, accounts, but um, there are cases where projects will need it. And so, yes, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Just ask us, and we'll, we'll get that to you. Mm -hmm. Do we have a limit for the meeting? Let's say 40 minutes, or we can do it for Do you want to say something? <laughs> okay, there are, there are two different kinds of accounts, and one of them costs us money, and one of them does not. Beyond and beyond, beyond and beyond, we're already paying, right? So we, we pay an amount for Zoom anyway. So our request would be that if you can get your meetings to stay within a 40-minute time frame, um, then please don't request a higher account because it costs us money to provide that for you. Um, but if it's required, then we do it. Right, absolutely. If it's required, then you will get it. There is, but it's really the same as the pro. I think it's a hundred people. That's what I want to say. It's a hundred people. Because with Zoom, it was very less. What? Just oh, sorry. With go to meeting, it was just thirty. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct. It's more than go to meeting. Yes. 
Um, staff upgrades just don't affect you guys so much, except for that first one probably, which is uh, all of our email addresses are now OS.com. If your staff, so if you are talking to us and you're putting .org again, we will still get your email. Um, but just know that if you're going to to keep doing that, there may come a time when it's less likely to get to us. <laughs> okay. Um, and LastPass for all staff basically that allows us to access all of our necessary tools. Uh -huh. well, I was waiting for him to turn on. Finish the last pass. I'm good. Go ahead. Okay, no. <laughs> Who's the chapter leader here? Who's using Meetup? So who's using the OWASP Pro Meetup account? The OWASP Global account. You have a global account, so you can put your Meetup Underneath the so you don't have to pay for it, not to go Yes, and this is actually a, an important point to bring up. Um, as part of the way we're going to start doing membership and the website probably in Q3, Q4 timeframe, we're going to be aggressively trying to get people to go to your meetups. And the reference point for that will be the corporate meetup account. So if they become a new member, they'll be shown, here's all the local chapters near you meeting. And if you're not using the OWAS one, you will not appear in that map. Yeah. Please, because please. you won't have an account associated with the company. So that would be, be important to start move, migrating your chapters to the corporate meetup account. One, we pay yes. for it, so it's free. And two, it allows the organization to look bigger to the outside world, that there's 165 places you can go and learn about OWAS at any point in time with all the different chapters close to you. So we're going to be deepening our relationship with meetup um, and we're going to be also using it as when, we, when people become new members to tell them to go to the first place you should go is go to the local chapter and here's where they can go because they'll be able to see it on, on top of Meetup. Also, if you go to meetup.org, you get to see the biggest, uh, <coughs> 10 biggest uh, meetups, the right. biggest chapters. Number seven, woo! All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Could you be as an American towards the world be losing the term aggressively? What's the whole community being careful about this system? You will go. <laughs> oh, no, at, at the end of the day, you know, I understand the thing I've learned about this community is that there is some sense of anarchy, that people do want to be in charge of things, and that's totally cool. That's fine. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the foundation needs to do what's going to help grow the foundation <coughs> with as little resources as necessary. And so if we all use Meetup, you know, you can go to meetup.com slash pro slash OWASP and you'll see a map of all the chapters around the world, when their next medium meetings are going to be and all that stuff, which is really handy if you're a new member to the community. If they have to go search around on Meetup trying to find it, they may be less likely to find because they might not even go to Meetup in the first place. So we're just trying to provide services that are relatively affordable for the foundation to connect people that are interested in OWASP to you. And so the idea is if we do it something we'll pay for it to make it easy for everybody. And it was back to so last year then we had six, seven different meetup accounts. And people had to pay with meet up themselves and we reverse the divorce. So that makes no sense. We well, pay I'll say, for it. I'll say right now there are 262 chapters and 164 of them use our corporate meetup account. Yes. So it's, it's about 60% compliant. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly moving people toward ours almost every month. That's <coughs> it's a good and another big benefit is that if you don't know about Meetup, is you'll actually, if someone's going to another, you know, security thing in your area, they'll find our stuff too. So there's some real benefit to market the organization through that tool as well. So several years ago, um, you know, when, when the corporate Meetup came to be, um, there was some limitation in administrative rights that I would lose, and so I decided to keep my own. So how about today, with an increase in staff? What am I losing if I go to the corporate? I don't know the answer to that question. Just find out what the requirements are. I can answer it. Right. I can answer it. The answer is nothing. Um, what you end up doing um, is OWASP is the event organizer, if you will, and we make you a co-organizer. So you have all the same permissions that OWASP does. The only thing is that you don't have to pay for it. Um, and really, I can't think of anything else that is different. All right, so, but if I want to show people that I just requested a view and you can't. No. Yeah. no. I'd be able to do it myself. Yes, absolutely. All right, babe. Count Ellie. All right. <laughs> That's one more. <laughs> um, 
another important thing about Meetup, if you're a project, there's no reason why you can't use it as well. Why not? <laughs> right? Yeah. So if, if you feel like you could use that service for whatever purpose, you can also request a Meetup for that. There we go, we're at the end. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of my, my swipe at Matt Tassaro because he always put up something, you know, really nice. <laughs> um, from this, do we have any questions? Yes? Um, I am the OWASP Montreal chapter leader. I'm Anne Gauthier from Canada, super far away. It's amazing to be here. Thank you so much. I don't know the roadmap for 2020, but I would like to bring an uh, AppSec conference in Montreal. So I would like to know how to apply uh, to bring the conference in Montreal next year. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah! Yeah, for, for the global app sex, there is not currently a form for it. If you're, we're doing a regional um, event, we have forms for that. Um, I don't know what we want to do as far as global goes. So, yes, she came yes. in after me. Emily. So, Emily in the end, the new one. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, I'm so late, and I still have made, yeah, it's something, but yeah. I'm so happy to have that conversation. Yes, let's connect after this. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, yes. I'm Jay from All Bus China. So I'm All right. Woo!
But the first one, so he's, he's working through the homework to propose the community. Okay, so it's the outreach on the main engagement. People it's already apply to all the children that they have to define the goal and the scope. And, and part of that proposal is having the necessary officers for the committee. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested, absolutely get in contact with Andrew Vanderstock. Well, it's all we have. We want somebody from the staff to be also related to the committee. It's not just to control it, but just a short line with the staff or uh, operational. So if you need something, you don't get lost, but you have a direct contact with the foundation. Because you all are the foundation. It's like there's not a foundation in us, it's one of us. How many people in here have ever been on a committee in the past, an OWASP committee? It's a good experience. Have, have been or have, 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 been. Said have never been? No, have, have been. been. Yeah. All right, so I mean, it's a very rewarding experience. I was on the conferences committee. Um, what were you on? I was on women in our <laughs> Okay. And membership. Membership. He, he headed up chapter leaders. And all these are very important. There's still that need, even though we don't have them anymore. You know, right? For example, for chapters, wouldn't it be great for every chapter if they can go to one place and everything that happens in the chapters, all their templates, how to get sponsorship, how to hold meetings, etc. And there is some of that there. It's antiquated. It needs to be updated. But you know, there's a definite need for this stuff and uh, the service for the community and for all of us. I can help out with the chapters committee. Yeah. I can do that. I have documentation of it all over it. I can help out with that. Well, we have. We, and need, we, need, we, need, we need a group of people. Yes. We can get the group of people for sure. There yes, are a lot of people who want to. There's people who want to talk to me. Just to belabor the point, there's 200 and some odd chapters which you just saw here. There's one chapter person on staff. There are 139 projects plus. There's one project person on staff. That's the one. Sure. <laughs> That's your, you're absolutely right. There's 0.5 <laughs> staff members. Um, so really, it's really important that if you're at all interested in doing a committee or even would just like to see how it's done, please get in contact. There was recently the board meeting, I think that we learned last year, the misconception about community and foundation. The people are like, we and against the foundation, the foundation against us. And that's something to worry me, because what, what we hope we know us is there was one more us, one community, there's no hierarchy, you know more or less than you people, than all people who are here for 10 years or 15 years. It's one community, we all work together for the same goal. So I really was frustrated when I heard this. The foundation against us, they, there is no foundation against us. Always is driven by the community, supported by the staff, and guided by the board. We are one community with one call. I think that's very important. Thank you, Martin. Are there any other questions? Yes. Questions or simple topics for discussion? Sure, that team. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that we, we now have about 100 or 80 projects. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, a big part of them are documentation projects. And uh, the problem is uh, right now we haven't a uh, single and unified uh, platform for them. Uh, I know that a lot of projects, projects uh, are migrated to GitHub or something like that. I, I mean, thanks for what? Like uh, cheeses, and uh, at, the same, at the same time, uh, we lose a uh, unifying view and uh, and single process and single pipeline for for, for such project, projects. So every of them uh, choose each own text format, pipeline, uh, I don't know, uh, hosting, and so on. It would be great if you have a single platform. Uh, you can choose uh, uh, your favorite one, and uh, which is more important is that this button should, uh, should have a community of localization and translation. Because right now it's not so easy for projects, I mean, reputation projects, to be, uh, be translated in different languages. Because, uh, for example, uh, in this year we have tried to translate into Russian. Uh, by the way, I'm from Russia, <laughs> and the uh, leader of uh, Russian channel. And uh, 
there is there was a real problem because uh, in one project uh, there simply was uh, there simply were uh, text text files in markdown format and you can, and you should uh, try to translate it in text format. Another one uh, is another format. And at the same time, there is a special translation services like Transcripts or something like that. And we can use it uh, to translate it and uh, to, to give opportunity for different countries to have uh, realization, to realize commands. Uh, and furthermore, we have uh, made a special uh, special place for the implementation of projects like uh, subdomain of OWASP or for example, docs or WASP or mm -hmm. and host or in simplified ways, uh, branding and so on, all these project uh, uh, all these documentation projects. So this the problem, question and suggestion <laughs> one. If I can yeah. speak only for the cheat in fact. When we are doing the project, uh, we, have to, we are not able to work, we have to copy the ID from the MVP. So we have to reuse the same format, the same pipeline, the same, almost the same script. And uh, about the website, uh, we have uh, used the same, the same tools, the book. And uh, about the, the design, it's true that the design is not uh, it's a default input template, it's not for us to brand it. As we have actually, uh, we have uh, a process to automatically generate the site, deploy it. Currently, the, the, ticket, the ticket is on hold, waiting for the, for the design before to be released. So, um, we have uh, opened a channel on the Slack to discuss uh, around this point. Okay, so oui. it's uh, recorded, uh, so we have to hear what you say. Okay, sorry. Uh, the objective for the ticket is to. Uh, is to be the more readable possible, so it's the reason that the, most of the content has been, uh, the techniques has been copied for the MCG. And about the website, uh, we are working with our Harold in order to, to find a way, for example, to, to have a template for ebook, because ebook seems to be one of the tools used, but can be another one, in order to provide uh, some kind of uh, unified template and uh, things that can be reused and used as a toolkit. For the, for the new project. So, uh, the cheat sheet can be, has been designed to be used as a sandbox to, to, to create this kind of, uh, of template. But as in the team, we are not uh, good at uh, design, we, <laughs> we have uh, delegated to our own this, this, this fact. About the, the translations, in fact, my main concern about the cheat sheets is uh, related to the maintenance. Because, for example, uh, we have uh, currently 70, around 70 sheets, I think, and uh, we are four for the maintenance. We are uh, an amazing community, but if we consult, for example, in Russian, Chinese, and other one, my first question, simple, is who will be in charge to maintain the technical content? Because if we translate, even if it's an automated process, we must maintain the English uh, and the one other version. So, uh, in fact, about the plantation, I have put in hold this uh, process just because uh, I have concern about the, the maintenance of the cheat sheet because it was the main issue that has been raised to us about the quality of the content. And it's the reason why we have uh, all the, the, the translation uh, process and we are waiting some kind of uh, response or guidance about this fact. So, uh, I don't know if it's uh, the same for you about your project, for example, in terms of translation. But it's uh, just to give you some information about the cheat sheet and the concern about the design and the, the translation. Uh, this was a simple example. I, I know about it. I, I, I knew this threads and Slack and we'll have we have already discussed it. Uh, it would be great if uh, we simply have a default platform for new products, for example, and it will give uh, give opportunity to these uh, new projects not to reinvent uh, and make each other platform, and you simply use a, a base platform, base framework. It can be Gitbook, for example, by the way, uh, as I remember, it lies in localization in a uh, new version, I mean, uh, a service version. Uh, 
and uh, cheat sheets in the same in the same time is not maybe it's not main target for this platform because it uh, uh, changes very uh, quickly and very often. And uh, I think about maybe more stable projects, uh, stable that uh, releases uh, not every uh, month or, or something like that. So uh, we can choose Git Gitbook, we can choose uh, read the docs uh, service or something like that, but it will be great if we have a, 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 at least one as a base and a single for for projects and maybe some projects can choose another another one but it will it, it will be decision of this project. Some of it is a standardization problem. I think um, what you have here, you're, you're talking multiple things for one. Um, one is the subdomains, which we can talk about creating. It's certainly one of the things we're going to do moving forward, making sure that we have uh, appropriate subdomains for each part, if you will, of OWASP. Um, so that's the first part. Second is the, the translation issue. Um, one of the things we want to do with the project committee is to have them work on um, services for projects, and one of those is providing translation services. Um, and documentation is one of those unique things in a documentation project, because uh, if you're working software, it's fairly standardized. I'll call it standardized anyway, where you have IETN files that stands for internationalization, and you, you create a process that basically goes out and looks at the strings and brings you back you know, your um, translated copy, if you will. And for documentation, it's a lot different. Um, so if there's anything that we can learn from what you're doing and what Cheat Sheets is doing um, that would help us to figure out how to do translation of documentation better. Um, uh, there's already services to help us. In <laughs> yeah. By the way, as I remember, in WASP, we use Crowded. Yeah, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. before in the past, that's true. And it's not outside the realm of, of what we would like to do in the future. Your project is somewhat different from Cheat Sheets. I understand perfectly well why it is that he would have such a, a major issue with keeping translations up to date because even, even though the translation is done automatically, it's not right. You can say that, right? It is not right. It doesn't matter if, if you're doing an automatic translation, it's not going to be right. Something's wrong. No, I'm not talking about automatic translations. Okay, so I didn't catch that. So, uh, some companies uh, can, okay. Okay. can give a uh, uh, resource of translators mm -hmm. uh, to make translation of um, big, uh, really big projects. Okay. So it will, it will seem to be convenient for them to use. So yeah, you're talking about project services specifically, and yes, we are going to definitely do that. Um, and I, I, I have another question and topics. Uh, right now, it's it looks like not very easy uh, for companies uh, to make uh, cooperation or maybe co cooperation with OWASP uh, in case of events. I mean, for example, if we have some uh, big uh, security conference uh, and uh, on on our, on one side and OWASP on another side. Uh, it will be very interesting uh, to have uh, some kind of OWASP track in it, for example. And it will give uh, some pros and cons to uh, OWASP and for the security conference. And right now it's not easy to, to make a cooperation and it will be very great if we have some simplified way to do it. Talking specifically about OWASP co-branding for events. Yep, because right now it's uh, it's not possible to use uh, OWASP uh, brand and OWASP branding uh, and uh, call, for example, this track uh, like OWASP AppSec track. Mm -hmm. uh, Co-branding, anybody from the rest of the staff want to take that on? Um, we're trying to figure out what the community wants. So, um, Give us your feedback. Thank you. 
Branding in particular is something we're discussing, so whatever feedback the community has would be welcomed. Um, one of the challenges we have is we want to make sure that it's clear if it's an OWASP event versus a supported by type of event. Um, and we have compliance issues on both sides of that today. Um, as you know, Harold pointed out, the idea here is the first is to simplify. So we've been trying to kind of define how things are supposed to work. In the case of you know, sponsoring events, we haven't really been able to nail that down when it comes to branding. The one thing we have decided to do um, and we're in the process of doing is, um, for instance, getting our trademarks under control. Uh, this is something that does not exist today. Um, so, for instance, you know, legally, I don't want to give you any advice, but if you wanted to have a conference and call it OWASP, there'd be no teeth for us to stop you because we don't have a trademark on OWASP. Um, so, we need to first clean that up um, before we can start enforcing um, some of those activities. Now, it's well known, and the community went out, those people that did that, but legally, we have no recourse today. So we're trying to get the trademarks under control, um, standardized on naming. So you'll see now our conferences are going to be called Global AFSEC and then a city for those. Uh, we are working to get um, the chapter in Melbourne. It's been doing a great event called AFSEC Day. And so we're going to get the term AFSEC Day days to use for our regional conferences if, if they want to use a trademark name that, that we can protect. Um, so we're kind of working from the top down. But when it comes to licensing, I don't have a really good answer for that yet. So if you have uh, feedback or ideas, I'd love to hear them. Not the best answer, but that's the truth. I'd rather give you the truth than a lie. How does that sound? And if you do have ideas, it's fabulous. Okay. If you do have ideas, the if the project committee, I'm sure would love to hear them. That's a good location to go to for us to collect that kind of information. Especially where it specifically refers to projects and events. Um, and the one thing we one thing we have to be careful to do in this community is we have to decide how much centralized control do we want and how much anarchy do we want. Right. You know, I think the reason why OAS has thrived is because people are able to take on and do what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, that does create conflict when you get to the end destination. Um, but the alternative is that we control it from the start. And I'm not sure the community would love that every time. So it's trying to find that careful balance between those two places. Any other questions? Uh, can I make one more plug, just so yes. you know? <laughs> From, so you may not know, but last year uh, projects, I'm talking about projects, not chapters, but last year projects spent about $36,000 in total. This year's budget is $200,000. If you're working on a project and you need resources or money, come and ask us for it, because we have the money to spend this year, okay? If you're a chapter, over the last five years, um, we have spent around $200,000 on chapter expenses. This year, the budget is two fifty. If you have a chapter and you don't have money and you want to do something, come and ask us. If you're a chapter with money, uh, try to give it to somebody else that does need it, all right? Um, there's enough money to go around, but also, but here's another statistic we found, is that over the last five years, no chapter has spent more than $5,000 per year. But we have over 10 chapters that have over $60,000 on their chapter budget and they don't spend it. Which means the chapter, which means the foundation cannot hire great documentation people or other folks to help the foundation. So if, the more we think about as, as one organization, I think the better off we'll be. And if you have a project, we have money. The, the board has allocated money for projects. Um, and we want to spend it on projects. So let us know um, and we'll find a way to make it happen. Come and ask. Any other questions? Okay, let's get to the really important stuff, and that's the pizza and the drinks.